First thing we need to do, we need to trim this thing up and get it up on the kickstand. So we'll trim up the engine. Once we get it up to here, we can go ahead and flip this down and then bring it down to where it's resting on there. Now, if yours won't trim, then you're going to need to come over here and take this cap off and try and fill it up with a straw or something like that just so you can get some fluid in there to trim it up and if not then you're going to have to come over to um, it's this side right here and you'll have a manual release you'll put a flathead in there and manually release it and then you can pick the engine up by hand but once you get it here put it on the kickstand we're going to actually trim it down again till it's resting on that and then what I like to do is just go ahead and First of all, I'm going to wipe these off just because they're pretty dirty just to get all this stuff off of here. Wipe these rams off. And then we're going to hold the down button. And it's going to suck our rams in. That's going to help us protect them so we don't nick them when we try and take the caps off. There we go. So now we've got both of our rams all the way in. And we can come in here and put our tool on here to take these off. I know most of you are not going to be going out and spending $800, $1,000 on a Yamaha trim kit. So what I would suggest doing is getting these right here. These are marine tech tools. And um, depending on what lower unit you have is going to depend on which one you need. Um, these are, again, marine tech tools. Just a nice tool with the pins. They're replaceable little flathead screwdriver on the one end and um, these will fit all kinds they make pretty much one for every single engine um, I'm not sure I think I need here's all the different ones so like for me for the one I'm doing now I need a Yamaha two-stroke 115 it's pretty much the same thing so I'm gonna need the AMT 006 and the AMT 009 now once we get it to this spot right here now that we got these we can go ahead and wipe these off now it's very important to keep this part right here completely level with this so you're going to want to put it like that and keep your hand here to push pressure down so that way you keep it flush and then you want a long breaker bar the longer the bar the more leverage you get the better it's going to be and the easier it's going to be and you keep it this completely straight with this cap so this cap is at this angle so we want to keep the whole wrench at that same angle Once we get these caps free, they're spinning nice. You do not want to take these just directly off. You want to wait because there can be pressure behind here. But the same thing is going to go for this tilt tilt ram. We're going to go ahead and take that off. And then we'll work on getting this circ clip off and get this pin out so we can get this actual tilt out with the engine being here. Now I like to get in here to where I can put my leg into it and get that leverage from my leg. And that usually breaks it free. Now that we got all of them free, everything's going to be pressurized still in this. So what we're going to need to do is we basically want to get these caps spinned back to where they will let fluid out. There's going to be a lot of fluid. So you can take the cap and you can wiggle it. As you unscrew it, you'll wiggle, unscrew, wiggle, unscrew until eventually you've got fluid dripping out into your pan right like that. So I just went back and forth until it started to dribble out and then we're going to do that for pretty much all of them because we don't want any kind of pressure inside this system will, you know, it's going to blow the caps off and it's going to spray fluid everywhere. So get it to where the caps are just wiggling and there you go. We get all the fluid to drip out. It's going to be the same thing as for our tilt one so these caps are off you know i can take them off but we need to be able to get the rams out and since there's pressure you're not going to be able to really pull these out so what we're going to do is we're going to screw back you know three or four threads we're not going to tighten them up we're just going to screw them back to get three or four threads on there 
and then we're going to go ahead and hit the trim button to send these things out there we go and then we'll be able to loosen our caps and do the same thing we did the first time where we you know now that you've got pressure there you're just going to unscrew them and wait until you can wiggle them and let fluid come out so that way all the pressure that you just made see there we go there's the pressure all the bubbles you need to do the same thing on this side usually once one side goes then the other side loses its pressure so not you know the worst thing but again you just don't want to have one of these things push out and spray fluid everywhere but now we've got our whole cap and everything out now let's get the tilt ram out up here there's a circlip we're going to need to take off this circlip and push that pin out so I just need to get a circlip to open this clip up and then pull it off and then we'll be able to push that pin out Should just be able to tap on this and that'll get it to push out and then come over here and pull the pin out once we get the pin out now you're not going to be able to really pull this thing out you've got a little bit of a wiggle room right here you just want to be careful about this pipe you don't want to put too much stress on that but um the problem is you can't pull this out and get it out because it's going to be in here so what we need to do is pick up on the engine and tilt it forward but depending on how your boat is up here make sure it's not going to hit anything with the cowling or smash the rigging or if you've got a steering cylinder like a hydraulic cylinder make sure you're not hitting that but we can just pick this outboard up like that so you see how i just tilted that all the way up um this is a little bit easier because we don't have um a steering cylinder up there we just got regular rigging so I'm going to put a rag down here so that way that um, steering piece can rest on the bracket and then I'll be able to pull the tilt ram out Now once we get to here, we want to get all the fluid that's in here out. So what I like to do, just take a ketchup bottle, super easy gravity feed, take a little clear hose, stick it down to the bottom, pull our pan here, and we will squeeze the bottle, squeeze the air out, and then stick it in here and create a siphon. Oh. And we'll siphon out all of the old fluid a lot of times see this one's not that bad this is pretty clean but a lot of times depending on how bad your unit is they'll have water in it stuff like that so you need to get all that old nasty fluid out of there with the water and all the contaminants that are in it and then we'll go ahead and depending on your unit some of them will do both sides at the same time some of them will not It's not going to get all of it out of there if you want to get you know more you're going to have to get something to suck it out but by and large that's going to get pretty much everything out make it real clean make it real clean on the inside of there so now when we go to put these back on we will just take fluid and pour fluid in there to fill it all the way up and that'll help us to fill the unit up with fluid something that i just realized that i do not have here are the clamps for this so i'm going to need to make a clamp to hold this so i can get this cap off so that way we can get this cap off of here as well these ones are going to be super easy to do you'll notice here's your rams your caps will come off of the ram like that and um Pretty much depending on the cap there'll be an o-ring on the inside sometimes these i just have a dust seal cover on the top of these and you can feel how hard this rubber is it's just dry rotted and that's pretty much why it's leaking it's you know eating itself up but 
other than that these rams are really clean you'll notice basically when to check these you want to run your finger up and down them with your fingernail and if you can catch your fingernail on a nick or a ding or a pit or anything like that then you're going to want to replace this but the o-rings and the bushings and that stuff usually that stuff doesn't really go bad you a lot of times you can reuse the o-rings a lot of people like to replace them um, for these i'm not going to replace these i'm going to use the same o-rings not a not a big deal the o-rings usually don't go bad but when you change stuff it's pretty much this seal and the o-ring are pretty much the only things that you need to replace when you service these caps unless these caps are too hard and you can't get them off with the tool and you've got to use an air hammer to chisel them off then you'll have to replace the caps but other than that those are pretty much the seals we're going to replace i do need to get this off though so let's make a jig to hold this I just need something to clamp this on a vise to hold it. I need to get this o-ring and that bushing off because I do not want to smash that. But let me get a hole saw that's the same size as this. Or maybe just a little bit smaller than this. Now I'm just going to take a block of wood like this and I'm going to put a hole in the middle of it, right in the middle. Now it is very important that you remember if you take these things off what side this wiper is on it's like you've got an o-ring and then you've got this bushing or um, i know i think they call it a wiper a wiper seal so when you take this off it's very important that you remember which side the seal was on and it's just got like a little you know thing right there where it's split so we're just going to use a little pick to pull that off but remember that that is on the bottom on these and over here you see it's on the top so um, very important to remember which side that is on And now we've got that in there. Our jig looks like that is perfect. So now what we can do is just take these little bushings out of this side. There's two of them on here. And then we just need to take a screwdriver and we will Okay, now that we got this thing spinning free, we can just pull it out, you know. We'll clean that out before we put this back on there, but now we can get this to go ahead and pop off of there. There we go. And now what we need to do is we need to clean this whole area because it is very dirty and we're now ready to start changing these seals out and putting these things back together. And you don't want anything, any kind of dirt, any anything like this, like this is gonna cause you problems if that gets into the trim unit so we need to clean all this off put a clean rag down and then we'll clean everything and start reassembling the um change the seals and reassemble the ram so we can put them back onto the trim unit getting these off is pretty easy you pretty much just need a seal puller or a flathead either will work main thing is you just do not want to scratch the cap when you pull it out Looks like the center of that one came out and the rest of it did not. Now we can just pretty much clean the inside like that you just take a rag kind of stick it in there and spin it around clean it up get all the junk off of it pretty clean 
this one's pretty dirty. This one might have to get it's quite a bit of corrosion on this, and I might have to get the take a razor blade and Pushing the new seals down in is pretty easy. This is the tilt seal. And um, you'll notice that the wiper, there's like a dust seal on the top. Main thing is you do not want to damage that. And what I like to use is a socket because you can push down on it like that, make it very easy. And the same is going to go for the trim ram seals as part number. The dust seal, it's going to be like a you know lip there. That lip is going to go up. And then the inside, you know, this is going to go down. So it'll sit like that. They call it a dust seal. And then we'll do the same thing. Just need a little bit of gasket sealant on there. You know, I like the Johnson Evinrude gasket sealing compound, but I don't have any right now. So just use this like this. Push that down in there. Take our socket and push it the rest of the day way down in there. And that is it. That's pretty much how you put the seal in. It's really, really super simple. You want to take some ATF. We're going to put a little ATF on there. You can put some right on the, on the ram. And then that way makes that go down real nice and easy. Same thing. Put a little ATF on the ram. A little ATF in here. There you go. And then whenever you put this on, we're also going to put ATF on all, pretty much all the seals and then also on the threads. So that way it goes on there nice and clean and easy. Back to this one. Very similar. We're just going to put some ATF in here. That way we can take our ram now this one is a little bit different you'll notice that this is like concave so you don't really have to worry too much about sticking it on there just be careful put put atf on here and then put atf on the seal and that way whenever you put it on it doesn't mess up that dust seal Now we can just screw this back into the cap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take the cap off. Take those off. Nice little brace that I made. Now we want to make sure that we clean all this off. Once we get this all clean, we can put our wiper seal and the um, O-ring back on here. Remember, O-ring goes first, little ATF on there, make everything nice and lubricated, and then also our wiper, so the wiper goes on, and boom, there is, like that, wiper on the bottom, on this one, the wiper's on the top, so just making sure that, now we can also take this, put ATF on every, all of our O-rings on both the cap and the um, bottom, and we will take these out there and put them into the trim unit, but we will fill the trim unit full of ATF first. Okay, so now we got those all cleaned off and um, I just wiped it off with a rag. We can go ahead and fill this with the ATF, then we'll pour ATF on our seals and go ahead and put these on.
now we got all these on there and then when you go ahead and torque these things you just need to use the wrench you don't need to use the cheater bar just put them on there and tighten them as tight as you can um torquing them is kind of difficult depending on situation but yeah once you hit these tight to where they won't tight you just don't want to slip off and scratch the rams we can go ahead and run this up and down a couple times take the cap off and we're going to fill the unit up a lot of times it will fill up with air you'll make air bubbles and so we'll need to get all the foamy fluid out and get good clean hydraulic fluid all the way to the top of this with everything all the way out All right, now I've got um, our pin back in here. Everything's been ran down and up once. Got our sir clip back on this side over here. So now we will go ahead and flip this up and we will run the trim unit up and down two to three times. And then we'll pull the cap and top it off to make sure that a the trim unit is completely full of fluid. I'm guessing this thing is going to be full because of how um, nice it's flowing up and down. But we're going to go ahead and crack this just to let any air out and see, you know, how full it is. I don't have a lot of bubbles, so that's good. So we don't have any water in there. Okay, so I don't have any fluid coming out. Let me top this off and then we will put the cap on there, run it up and down one more time, and that will be it. And we got no leaks so that means we are good to go and that is how you reseal your trim unit.